Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we will talk about the activity lifecycle in Android app development. So we'll start with the definition of an activity lifecycle. So as the user navigates throughout and back to your application, the activity instance in your app transitions through different states in their lifecycle. If you have worked with Java or any other programming language, then you must have seen that your program starts from the main function. In the similar way, Android system initiates its program within an activity starting with a call to onCreate callback method. The activity class provides a number of callback methods that allow the activity to know that a state has changed, that the system is creating, stopping, or resuming an activity or destroying the process in which the activity resides. So for example, you are creating a video streaming application and you can declare how your activity behaves when the user leaves and re-enters your application. So for example, if you are building a video streaming app, uh, you might pause the video and terminate the network, network connection when the user switches to another app. And when the user returns to your application, you can reconnect to the network and allow the user to resume the video from the same spot. So each callback method in an activity lifecycle allow us to perform a specific work that's appropriate to a given change of state. And doing the right work at the right time and handling transitions properly will make our application more robust and performant. All right, so now we're going to take a look at what callbacks are provided by the Android activity class. So the activity class provides a core set of seven callbacks and they are on create, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, on destroy, and on restart. So we will take a look at to each one of them in detail in the next slides. So now let's take a look at on create callback lifecycle method. On create callback method is fired when the system creates the activity. So in this method, we perform the basic application startup logic that should happen only once for the entire lifecycle of an activity. For example, uh, your implementation of an onCreate might bind data to a list, initialize some class scope variables, and inflating the view. The onCreate method also receives the parameter saved instant state, which is a bundle object containing the activities previously saved state. If the activity has never existed before, the value of the bundle object is null. All right, so let us now see an example of the onCreate method. Here is an implementation of onCreate, which shows the fundamental setup for the activity, such as declaring the user interface, defining member variables, and configuring some of the UI. So in this example, we can see that we are cr creating some variables and inside the onCreate function, we are calling the super method for this onCreate, which will complete the creation of activity. And here we are recovering the instant state. So if the activity existed before, we are checking the saved instant state and then we are storing this to game state. And on the set, then we are calling the set content view method, which will set the user interface for this activity. And we are setting the activities view hierarchy to r dot layout dot main activity. So the layout files are basically defined under the resources directory as an XML file. And then we are finding a view which was defined in this layout file by passing the ID of that view and we are storing it in the reference variable called a text view. So that was the basic setup that we usually do in the onCreate callback function. So your activity does not reside in the created state. After the onCreate callback method finishes execution, the activity enters the started state and the system calls the onStart callback function, which we are going to take a look at in the next slide. So after onCreate is finished, the system calls the onStart callback method. So when the activity enters the started state, the system invokes the onStart callback method. 
the on start call makes the activity visible to the user as the app is preparing for the activity to enter the foreground and becomes interactive. So in this method, the app initializes the code that maintains the UI. So the on start callback methods completes very quickly and the activity does not stay resident in this started state. Once this callback finishes, the activity enters the resume state and the system invokes the on resume callback method, which we are going to take a look at in the next slide. So here we have the on resume callback method, which is invoked after on start. When the activity enters the resume state, which means the app is in foreground, then the system invokes the on resume callback. So this is a state in which the app interacts with the user, which means the user can navigate to different screens, perform certain actions with the application. The on resume callback is sort of a permanent state for the application because the application stays in this state until something happens to take the focus away from the app. So such an event might be, for instance, receiving a phone call, the user navigating to another activity within the same application, or the device screens turning off. So these are some events which will take the focus away from the app. So when such an interrupt event occurs, the activity enters the paused state and the system invokes on pause callback function, which we are going to take a look at in the next slide. So the on pause callback function is called after the on resume callback. All right, so uh, the system calls this method as the first indication that the user is leaving your activity. Though it does not always mean that the activity is being destroyed, it indicates that the activity is no longer in the foreground. We can use the on pause method to pause or adjust operations that should not continue while the activity is in the pause state. So there are, there are uh, several reasons why an activity may enter this state. For example, some interrupt event happens as we discussed in the on resume callback for example receiving a phone call uh, and another instance might be a new semi-transparent activity such as a dialog box opens up and when this happens the activity goes to the on pause state we can also use the on pause method to release the system resources so for example, like a GPS or any resource that may affect the battery life when your activity is in the paused state and the user does not need them. So we can do some cleanup work in the on pause callback function. So the on pause execution is very brief and does not necessarily afford enough time to perform save operations. So for this reason, it is not recommended to use on pause to save application data or user data make some network calls or execute database transactions. Such work may not complete before the method completes. So instead, you should perform heavy load shutdowns operations during the on stop callback, which we are going to discuss next. So after the on pause callback function, we have the on stop callback function. So the system calls on stop callback when your activity is no longer visible to the user which means that it has entered the stop state. This may occur, for example, when a newly launched activity comes to cover the entire screen. The system may also call on stop when the activity has finished running and is about to be terminated. So when the activity moves to the on stop state, this is the point where it is recommended to perform some cleanup work. So in this method, the app should release or adjust the resources that are not needed while the app is not visible to the user. So for example, your application might pause some animations or switch from, from fine grained to coarse grained location updates. And it is recommended to use on stop function to perform relatively CPU intensive shutdown operations. So for example, you can't find a more opportune time to save information to the database. You might do something during the on stop. So for example, you can uh, do some operations, for example, saving the data or saving the information to the database. It is recommended to do such operations during the on stop callback function. So one more advantage of the on stop callback is the activity object is kept in the memory. 
which means that when the activity resumes the activity recalls this information you do not need to reinitialize the components that were created during any of the callback methods leading up to the resumed state so the system keep track of the current state for each view object in the layout so for example if the user has entered some text into an edit text box the content is retained so we do not need to save and restore it so from the stop state the activity either comes to interact with the user or the activity is finished running and goes away if the activity comes back the system invokes the on restart callback and if the activity is finished the system calls on destroy which we are going to take a look at in the next slide so let's take a look at the on destroy callback function so the on destroy callback is called before the activity is destroyed so the system invokes this callback because the activity is finishing due to the user completely dismissing the activity or due to finish being called on the activity or the system is temporarily destroying the activity due to a configuration change for example a device rotation so this is the lifecycle callback where we can do a cleanup work and where we can clean up anything that it needs before the activity is destroyed it is recommended to release all the resources that an application has acquired during its life cycle in the on destroy callback so one important thing to note is that if the on destroy callback is called as a result of a configuration change the system immediately creates a new activity instance and then calls the on create method on that new instance in the new configuration and now we are going to take a look at the on restart callback so on restart is called when the activity is restarted from a stop state so for example when the current activity is being redisplayed re to the user or for example when the current activity is being redisplayed to the user so in this function we can resume the work that we have stopped in the on stop state so let's take an example of a video streaming app so the video that we have paused during the on stop we can resume the video in the on restart callback function so these were the all seven callback methods that we have in an activity life cycle or that an activity goes through during the its life cycle all right so now we are going to take a look at the visual representation of an activity life cycle so here we have all the seven callbacks so when an activity is launched on create is called and then calls on start and once on start finish its execution the system calls on resume callback which indicates that the activity is currently currently running and it is in the foreground which indicates that the activity is running and is in the foreground and user can interact with the activity so when another activity comes to the foreground on pause is called and after this callback we have two routes either the activity is stopped which means the activity is no longer visible or the user returns back to the activity so if the user returns back to the activity on resume is called again if the activity is finishing or being destroyed by the system on destroy callback is called and which indicates that the activity is shut down and after the on stop callback if the user navigates to the activity the system calls on restart followed by on start and on resume so this is the complete diagram of all the lifecycle callbacks that an activity goes through during its life cycle